Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 1GX. It's also known as the 1GX1, but we're going to refer to it as the 1GX. And basically what this is, is a mini pocket gaming laptop. A UMPC, an Ultrabook, you can call it a netbook if you want to. And this is directly competing with the GPD brand, like the GPD Win or the GPD Win Max. Now before we get started here, I do want to mention that this was sent over for review. This is actually a prototype model, it's listed on the bottom, and I do have to send this back when I'm finished with my testing. I'm not being paid to make this video, nor is anybody going to review this content before it goes live. So as you can see, this laptop is absolutely tiny, and we're working with a 7-inch screen here. We do have a backlit keyboard, and it's powered by a 10th gen quad-core i5 CPU. They do offer a few different storage variants of this unit. On the low end, you can get 8 gigs of RAM with 256 gigabytes of storage, all the way up to 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. And they also offer this with a 4G module pre-installed. So inside of the box, along with the 1GX laptop, you're also going to receive your 45 watt charger. This uses a USB Type-C cable that's also included. And I'd say the main claim to fame to the 1GX are the detachable controllers. These connect to the PC over Bluetooth, and they slot right into each side of the laptop, turning it into kind of a little gaming console. And personally, I'm a big fan of this design. I love this idea. But I do wish, once these were attached to the laptop itself, they were automatically connected. Unfortunately, even when you have them attached to the unit itself, you do have to connect them over Bluetooth. So before we take a closer look at the 1GX and get into some testing, I did want to go over the specs real quick. It's definitely not a high-end laptop, but we do have some decent specs here given the form factor of this unit. For the CPU, we have the Intel Core i5-10210Y. Four cores, eight threads, base clock 1 gigahertz, and it'll turbo up to 4 gigahertz. For the GPU, this is where I think this little thing's lacking. It's the built-in Intel HD 617. We only have 24 EUs with this unit. So that's really what's going to hold this unit back, because if we take a look at the newly released GPD Win Max, we have the Intel Iris Pro with 64 EUs. So we have a much more powerful GPU in the GPD. As for RAM, you can get this in two different variants, 8 or 16, but unfortunately, this is running DDR3 RAM at 1600 megahertz, and this is really going to hurt GPU performance because the GPU relies on system memory for VRAM, and the faster it is, the better that GPU can perform. Storage is handled by an M.2 SSD. You can get one with 256 gigabytes or 512, but both have a micro SD card slot, so we can expand the storage a bit. It's got a 7-inch IPS 1920 by 1200 touch display. It's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 4.0, and there's an optional model with a 4G module pre-installed. It also has a 46 watt hour battery built in, and this can get really good battery life depending on what you're doing. Up to 9 hours for YouTube video playback and things like that, but when you're doing heavy gaming, I'd say around 2-3 to three hours. It really depends on what game you're playing and how hard it's stressing out that CPU and GPU. They have added some pretty cool aesthetics to the 1GX, like an RGB keyboard that can be programmed. There's several different modes here. And if we take a look around back, we also have this blue LED ring around the exhaust vents and the ports on this unit. Unfortunately, this is not RGB. You can either turn it on, it's going to be blue, or you can turn it off. Now I gotta say, the keyboard definitely isn't the greatest. I'm not a big fan of it. I know they had to work with a very small footprint here. I would have preferred bigger keys. But if you take a close enough look, some keys are smaller than others, and there's tons of function hotkeys here. And the one thing that really annoys me about this is the optical touchpad. In my experience, it's all over the place, but then again, I've never really been a big fan of these little touch nubs, so the touch screen definitely comes in handy when you don't have an external mouse plugged in. On the right hand side of the unit, they have added a micro HDMI port so we can connect a secondary display. And moving over to the left hand side, we do have our little SIM slash SD card tray. Most of our I.O. is on the rear of the unit. We have two USB Type-C ports, one full-size USB 3.0 port, and one 3.5mm audio jack. So all in all, there's not a ton of I.O. here, but you can connect a USB Type-C adapter and get as many ports as you need. So the first thing I wanted to do was run a couple benchmarks. Here we have Geekbench 5 on the 1GX, single core, 738, multi, 2735. Now we're going to compare this with the newly released GPD Win Max because they're in the same category. On the GPD Win Max, 1008 single core, 4115 on multi core. So the way it's looking for CPU performance right now, the GPD Win Max definitely has the 1GX beat. Next up, we have a GPU benchmark. This is 3D Mark Fire Strike. I had this plugged into wall power. I'm also set to ultimate performance in the Windows settings. 
and total score for the One GX, 878. So we definitely had to compare this to the GPD Win Max, and on the Win Max, total score, 2,557. So yeah, I didn't think there was going to be that much of a jump there, but that GPD Win Max has this beat in CPU and GPU performance. So going into this review, I was pretty excited about testing out these controllers here, but unfortunately, I'm having issues with the left-hand controller. Every time I pair it up, it pairs up fine for the first 10 seconds. Then I get a driver failure. I've tried charging it up, I've rebooted the system, I've done everything. I just can't get the left one to connect properly. And like I mentioned, they connect over Bluetooth and they connect independently, so there's really no way that I can use these because the left one is malfunctioning at the time of making this video. And these kind of clip in from the bottom to the side, but there is a lot of slack between the controller and the unit itself. As you can see, these are a bit wiggly. Now when you're holding it stationary, it's fine. They don't move around at all, but if you put any kind of pressure on them, you can see that gap open up and it kind of gives the impression that these aren't connected very well. So now it's time to move over to some PC gaming because this is being marketed as a gaming device. Here we have Fall Guys 720p, the lowest settings, half resolution, and we're getting an average of 35, and I see a dip below that quite often. So since I can't use the built-in controls, I just have an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth, and what I'm going to do for the next games is just connect to my game capture to make it a little easier to see. Here we have CSGO, 720p, low settings, and by the end of this run here, I was actually getting around 72 FPS on average. Really not that bad, but then again, CSGO's been around for a while, and it's a very well-optimized game, especially for Intel. Only one left. Counter-terrorists win. So I was expecting Minecraft Dungeons to run a little better than this. Now don't get me wrong, you can play this at 30 FPS all day on a device like this, but I was hoping to hit 60 with it. Lowest settings, 720p, and we're still not able to hit that 60. We're around 33 on average. So if you're looking to play something like this, I would personally just lock it at 30 FPS and it'll run it just fine. I also wanted to test out some GTA 5, so here we have it, 720p, normal settings, which is low for this game, and I'm getting an average of around 24 FPS. I was really hoping we could at least hit 30 with this thing, and uh, as of right now, this is being marketed as a gaming device. It's not looking like a great one, especially when you factor in the price on this thing, and I completely understand that it's all about that form factor, but uh, we should be getting a little better performance in everything that I tested so far. Now it's time to move over to a little bit of emulation. First up, we have Dreamcast using the Redream emulator. I'm upscaled to 1280 by 960. We have Dead or Alive 2, and it's running great. This is one of the harder games to emulate with Redream, so basically, as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, it's going to run it at full speed on the 1GX. Moving over to some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, upscaled to 720p, using the Vulcan back end, we have Soul Calibur 2. Not bad at all, I do notice some dips here and there, but overall we're sitting pretty steady at 60 FPS. And finally, at least for this video, we have some PSP using PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, Vulcan Backend, 3x resolution. Running it good, everybody knows this is a harder one to emulate, you will notice some stutters every once in a while, but that happens on even higher end hardware, so this is playable.
All right, so I've had about a week to spend with this thing, and uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm really not that impressed with the performance. Now, I do love the form factor. It's a great little form factor. Really do wish I could get this left controller working, but I'm going to chalk this up to this being a prototype. Because I have seen these working, and the last person who had this one before me actually had it working also. And you know, I say I'm not impressed with the performance here, and it really comes down to the price. If this was cheaper, I would be impressed with the performance, but the price you're paying for this, I really do think you should be getting more out of it. And we're going to talk about those prices right now. So these are some of the cheapest prices that I found online, and we're going to be taking a look at the Wi-Fi models. So base price on this, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and the Wi-Fi only model, 839. Moving up a little bit, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, Wi-Fi only model, $969. And if you want 4G or 5G, thousand bucks for the 8, 256, 1250 for the 16, 512. So yeah, this is really expensive for the performance you're getting out of this little thing. So it's really hard for me to recommend something like this at that price point. And if you absolutely need a super small laptop with controls built in, I would personally recommend the GPD Win Max over this. But in the end, it's really up to you. I do like the form factor. I love the look of this little thing. I just wish they would have put a more beefier CPU in here. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the One GX, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.